Okay, hello again guys. Welcome back here to our video tutorial series. As promised in this video, I am going to be teaching you guys about the pen tool and how to draw some uh, some curves inside of here. So I'm just going to go ahead here and fire off a new document and uh, I'll just give it one artboard for now. We'll just choose a letter size, which is 8.5 by 11 as you know, and um, we'll just leave everything else blank. So we'll just hit OK and it'll just fire up a new doc for us, and there we go. <clears throat> now, um, if I haven't mentioned it yet in the tutorial series, the one hotkey that I would like to teach everybody that I think is super important and really helpful as far as just establishing a better connection between the digital and the, the physical world is the space bar. So if we take a look at my cursor right here in the middle of the screen, and I'm just going to press down the space bar, and it's going to transform that cursor into a hand tool. And if I then click with my mouse and just drag any which way, I can then move my artboard around. And this is just something that I do anytime I start a new document in Illustrator because it just it, it's sort of similar to what I would do if I was sitting down in an actual drawing table and I was about to begin a real drawing on actual paper in the real world. Um, I would take my page and I would move it around and I would even probably spin it sideways and move it around. And we can't do that too easily, but we can at least um, build this connection between this uh, digital realm we're in and the physical world that we're actually in. And um, using the, uh, the space bar and the hand tool just kind of helps us with that. So um, just give yourself a, a chance to try to learn that one hotkey. I mean, it's the biggest key on the keyboard, so it shouldn't be hard to forget. Uh, let's dive right into this here. I'm going to grab the pen tool over here. And we're going to talk about how to draw some curves. So, so far we know that this pen tool in Illustrator is, is built off of points, right? We dro drop one point, and then we drop another point, and we drop another, and then another. Now, the pen tool then sticks to our cursor, so we have to either we can press the escape key to drop it, or if we want, we can also just go up here to the uh, selection tool, and we can just hit the selection tool and click anywhere on the page, and it'll drop the tool after that, okay? So <clears throat> that's one thing to know. But drawing straight lines can only get us so far, and especially with the stencil project that we're going to be working on uh, for our first project, you're going to want to be able to draw a lot more organic shapes. And the way to do that is going to be to draw curves. So if I just continue to go ahead and click straight lines out here, I quickly realize that if I was going to try to draw a curve, I would have to create all these little points and that is going to result in a very kind of chunky, sharp sort of thing that doesn't really give me any sort of organic feel. And that just isn't really what I want, right? I mean, I want to have a, I want to be able to create nice, smooth curves and really organic, bubbly shapes. And so let's just go ahead and get into that. I'm just going to hit my selection tool and I'll just hit delete to delete that. And let's look at some curves. So of course the way to get curves with a pen tool is to click once and then on the second click when you would normally draw a straight line just click and drag and you're going to see what happens is you start to curve out the line and you also get these two little handles that extend off of the second point in your curve. Okay, Now in the version of Illustrator that I'm using the pen tool continues to stay stuck to the cursor and so I'm just going to uh, go ahead and just hit escape and let's talk about this curve that I just drew um, with a little bit more detail, okay? In fact, I'm going to go over here and grab my selection tool and just click off of it. And first thing we're going to learn about a curve um, is that when it's not selected, none of the details of the curve are actually available, okay? So you have to go and you have to select that curve again. Now if I use my, my standard black arrow tool, my, my selection tool, and just click on that, all I get is this bounding box, this, this transform box here. And that's not really helpful. I mean, it is a little bit helpful because I can scale this out and you know maybe I can shrink it up a little bit to get a different shape, but that's not really the way that we handle curves in Illustrator. And you'll see me bouncing back and forth between what I'm doing and back and forth like that. I'm just using the undo hotkey. So that's of course control Z or command Z on the Mac. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's get back into this now. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, when we drew this curve, we got these little curve handles or what they call IK handles. And those have disappeared, so we want to get those back. So I'm going to go to my direct selection tool, which is the white arrow tool, and I'm just going to click on the very last point of the curve. When I click on that, I get my handles back, okay? And these IK handles, or these um, 
their Bezier curve handles or whatever you want to call them. These are the key to adjusting the properties of a curve that you've drawn. Sorry, of course I'm just grabbing a sip of water as we do our tutorial, right? Because of course I'm choking on something odd as I have started this video. Anyway, not your problem. Uh, once we have these handles up, we can then use these handles with our direct selection tool to adjust the angle and the uh, flex of our curve. Okay, and so you see this one that I have kind of, that I've grabbed up here, this upper curve. It's kind of got like a magnetic effect to the curve, whereas anywhere that I pull it, it pulls the curve in that direction. See that? So I can then take what this is, this nice smooth little curve that I have here, and I can tweak it out into any shape that I want. Now, there's another handle that's sticking off and jetting out into space, and that's kind of like your projection curve. That's, that's giving you a little bit of an indication of what the trajectory of your curve is going to be. Hopefully that makes sense if you continue to draw a line off of here. So let's do that. Now we can also grab this curve here and we can play with it a little bit and just do that on your own drawing and try to feel out how um, how it plays with the curve. It's a little bit wily. It's a little bit kind of crazy and hard to control because it's not actually meant to be affecting the curve you've drawn. It's supposed to be giving you an indication of how of what effects are going to be applied to the next section of curve that you draw off of this. Okay, so let me grab my pen tool and I'm just going to go and I'm going to continue off of this line that I've drawn. Okay, and if I haven't mentioned it in the series already, I can't remember if I have. It's been a few days since the last video, but um, the pen tool usually comes up with an asterisk, which you can see that little asterisk there. And then if we hover over an active point, we get that little slash tool. That means we're actually on the point. And if we continue to draw, if we just click, we're going to attach ourselves to that to that point there. Okay. So I'm going to click on that end point, and then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click, uh, I guess I'm going to click like right about here and then just drag again. And we're just going to take a look at what happens next. So the handles for this portion of the curve go away and we then get a new set of handles off our next active point over here. I'm going to hit escape to drop the pen tool or to detach the pen tool from the line that I'm drawing. Okay, and then I'm going to go back over here to my direct selection tool. I'm going to grab these handles again, and I'm just going to try to um, create a really nice smooth transition between the line that I drew here and then this new line, this new section of line that I've drawn as well. Okay, so these handles are never going to show up in your drawing. These are purely for editing purposes only. And so what we're trying to do right here, I'm, I've been practicing this for a lot of years, so I, I guess I know how to do it pretty well. What we're trying to do is create a really smooth transition so that we don't get this point in between first sectional line and then the other sectional line. And the way to handle that is to use our zoom tool. We want to zoom way in on uh, some of this section or at least on these two sections of the line. And there is a zoom tool down here in your toolbar. Let me shrink this up for you. There we go. So there is the zoom tool and you can zoom right in on your little bit of line work. And that'll just help you see the transition of uh, first the first section of line to the next, okay? Now there are some hotkeys for the zoom tool and I'll tell you what they are. If you hold down space bar and then control and then the alt key, you can zoom out. If you just hold down space bar and then control, you'll get zoom in. See, and then with just a click of the mouse, you can zoom in on your drawing and then spacebar control alt will switch it to zoom out. So again, I'm just going to be teaching a few of the navigation tools, um, navigation hotkeys for, of course, getting around your drawing with spacebar, moving your drawing around and then zooming in and out uh, can be really helpful once you start to lay down some organic line work like we're doing in this tutorial. So go back to my direct selection tool. I'm going to select this section of line. Now see I'm going to zoom out. So while that section of line is selected, I can then fire off my hotkeys, uh, spacebar, control, alt, zoom out until I see the handle that I need to adjust. Then I can grab this little handle here and I can just kind of I'm just watching, I'm watching this, this transition point as I drag this handle. So with the mouse, I'm dragging these two, and then I'm just watching that transition point, and I'm trying to get a nice, smooth transition. 
There we go. That seems real good right there, the way that this line connects to that one. Maybe if I just tape it over a little bit. And you know what I'm doing? I'm doing that old artist trick of just squinting at my work as I draw. Yeah, because that just kind of always helps us artists, doesn't it? As we're drawing something or as we're making something, we step back, we squint our eyes, we kind of shake our head a little bit, and we're just kind of uh, trying to see things from a different perspective. So I'd, I'd uh, recommend you do that as well. So I like that right there. I think that's a nice, smooth transition um, from one section of the line to the next. Okay, and so then I'm going to be good with that. So I'll go to my direct selection tool and I'll just drop everything. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let's see, so it's zoom out like this. Okay, good. And then let me just continue to draw right off of this point. So I'm just gonna go over here to this anchor point here and I'm just gonna click and I'm just gonna, uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go right like this and then I'm just gonna uh, pull out another little section of curve like that. And I'm just click and drag to get another section. I'll hit the escape key to drop that. All right, and then I'm just going to grab my direct selection tool and just I'm just going to mess around with this a little bit so that I can get a nice smooth transition from one to the next. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to grab my pen tool again and then I'm going to get in here and I'm going to go like this. All right. And I'm trying to create like a, a fun little spiral at the end of this line here. So um, this is pretty complicated line work in here, but um, let's see if we can pull it off. So go and whoop. there we go just like that okay escape and escape drops the tool and I'll grab my direct selection tool I'll drop everything I'll take a look and you know I'm starting to kind of see a little bit of a hiccup between this section of line excuse me I'll use the direct selection tool to highlight a certain section of the line this section here and then this section needs a little bit of work so I'm just going to zoom in on it and so once you get super good with these hotkeys, the space bar, the control, and the alt combination, then you can um, just very quickly using your, your pinky finger and your index finger, just hit space bar and control and zoom in on that. And so I'm just going to draw a space bar. I'm going to zoom in on that one like that. And maybe when I select this section of line, I don't really see the handle that I need to. So I'll, I'll select this one. I don't see that one either. So if I select this point like that, let's see, I'll zoom out a little. There we go. I can just fiddle around with this a little bit and try to get it to a point where I feel like it's good. But see, now here's what's happening. So now I'm getting a little hiccup between this section of line and this one. See, so now I have two uh, sort of areas that I'm really paying attention to. It's this connection point and then this one too. So it's really finicky and that's that's totally normal. This is what it's all about. So I'm just going to try to play around with this and I'm going to try to get a nice smooth transition from here to here and then another good one from here to there. So I think that should do that and then I'm going to do a little bit on here as well and just kind of pull out this line here and then yeah I mean that's pretty smooth. You know, I feel pretty good about that. All right. Now, at any point that I want, I can always, I can get in here and I can grab, excuse me. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, I can always get in here and I can grab just all of these uh, pieces of line work here. And then I can just move that whole section of line over. There we go. And it's created a little bit of a nightmare, but I can always fix that up. See? So when I get this little nasty bit right here, I can just jump in here on this piece of line, select a couple of different sections of line here and see which one is going to give me the handle I need to get back to where I started. That is definitely not the one. So let's get in here. Let's select this point and see what do I get there. Okay. So when you get a nasty little bit like that, you're probably gonna find one of your handles is stuck way off into space like that. So that thing is giving us a lot of influence. Now I'm seeing that this handle here is adjusting this portion of curve. There's another little one that's in there. There we go, let me get in here. Maybe it's this handle that I need to play with. Aha, there it is, okay, good. All right, so if I just pull that out like that, there we go. That's going to fix up that bit. And then I'm going to get this one here. There we go. That's going to do that. 
Now let's take a look at what I've done to myself here. See this right here? We're in the world of a nightmare. Oh my God, what has happened? See, so my line comes up like this, then it stops, it loops back. There's a little microscopic curve that comes in here like this, and that is just gonna cause me trouble. So I've really, I've really screwed up in this tutorial here. And so what am I gonna do? It's gonna take a little bit of work to play around with this, you know? It may be such a bad problem that it's going to be beneficial for me to just delete this whole top section of line and just redraw a new connection between this curve here and then this one up here. So let me just do that. I'm just going to select this with my direct selection tool. I'm just going to hit delete. Excuse me. There we go. We'll just take that little bit off like that. I'll grab my pen tool like here. I'll go like this and like this and then I'll just draw a new line. Okay. It's not going to be the prettiest line to start off with, but then I can grab my little arrow tool here and I can just pull it out to where it needs to be. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm in a lot better place than I used to be. Now I just adjust this one so that it kind of matches this angle here. And now I've got what I kind of came for. Okay, so that's a great example for you as to uh, what can happen when you start to move around line work that is done with curves. These curves are kind of sticky. They're kind of springy, like a rubber band a little bit. And if you move one, sometimes they can cause you a lot of trouble at other connection points, okay? So let me just go back and let's just talk a little bit about our laser cutter for a second. If I just go back to the nightmare that we had before and I'll just zoom in right here. So what this is gonna do with our laser cutter, our laser cutter is gonna come up here, it's gonna follow this line, it's gonna stop, and then it's gonna come back, and it's actually gonna be able to read this microscopic little U-turn right here. And so all it's gonna do probably is create a little teeny nick in our stencil project or in whatever we're trying to laser cut, but still, it's not what we intended. And even though it's just a little nick, it would probably be 10, 15 minutes of hand sanding on whatever sort of material you use in the laser cutter to get it smoothed out. And that is just not where we want to be. I mean, even though we're all craftsmen, we don't want to be having to sand out mistakes. So it's much easier to just go and pop in a new set of line. And here, let me just redo move. And I'm going to look here at the um, hotkey for redo move. And it's shift control Z. So let me just do that. And that's going to take some finger work. So I'm just going to go back to where I corrected it. Boom, boom, and boom. There we go. So that's what I want. Okay. So anyway, uh, the example is, hey, mistakes are going to happen. And you're going to have to designate uh, what the best plan of action is to when you get into one of these little um, uh, problem areas. And sometimes the best solution is to just delete the problem area and just re redraw a new piece of line work, okay? So play around draw drawing some curves and um, in the next video I'm going to uh, start to talk to you about how to use the shape tool a little bit. We're going to combine some shapes together using P Pathfinder. And then in videos after that, we're going to start talking about the outline function and the preview function, which are going to, we're going to start getting a little bit closer to how all of this relates to uh, driving the laser cutter machines. All right. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.